Welcome to the Human Conversation Podcast with Jules White, the real dragon slayer, author and entrepreneur sales coach. Tune in weekly for Human Conversation about business and sales. Enjoy business expert interviews, educational episodes and virtual cuppers with entrepreneur business owners. So grab yourself a cuppa and enjoy. Here is your host, Jules White. So welcome everybody to the Human Conversation. I say that every time I start a podcast now, and I was told the other week that that is actually a script, Um, but I don't like the word script. So if you want to know more about that, you need to listen to the previous episode that I just recorded. But without further ado, I want to introduce you to today's guest, who is amazing lady, uh, Vicky Kirby. She is the chief storyteller from a company called Vibrato Consulting. All of this is so um, intriguing, Vicky. Welcome <laughs> to the Human Conversation. Thank you, Jules. Thank you for having me. It's so nice to have you here. And I know what we're going to talk about and I know what you do. But of course, our listeners are probably thinking, well, who is this Vicky woman? Um, <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to find out. Tell us just a little bit about what vibrato consulting do, Vicky. And then I'm going to take people back and we're going to find out where you started in life. Yeah. Okay, so without our stories, we don't exist. I was told that by a Maori tribesman, and it's absolutely true for the Maori people. Over generations, their stories have kept their culture going, kept their traditions, their proud traditions going through a lot of difficult times. And when Joe Harawira said that to me, I thought, well, isn't that true? That's true of us as individuals, but that's true of companies too. That's true of organizations, no matter how small. Without our stories, we don't exist. And I got to thinking about learning more about storytelling, studying the deep craft of storytelling, because we all think we know what stories are, don't we? We all tell stories every day at the water cooler, but I wanted to really understand what storytelling was all about so I can help businesses find their core purpose-driven story and bring what they do to life, set them apart from their competition and really engage their, their customers' hearts and minds through their story. So that's what I do. I apply the deep craft of storytelling from screenwriters, from cultural storytellers, from authors to businesses so that they can speak with one voice and grow. Oh, I love that. I was just, you know, when you were doing that and saying all of that, I was kind of like lost in it, you know, (laughs) truly I was. It's just so easy to listen to to things around stories for me. I I find it fascinating. And what was interesting, I think, is the way that you said, um, you know, people kind of are used to telling their stories and, you know, they find it just something that they do and it's part of life sort of thing. But, you know, in business, when you say to people, so what's your story? You know, what's what's that? Why? And what's the story behind you and your journey? You know, often my clients in that bit will say, I'm not really sure. I don't think I've got a story. You know, and you must come across this in the work that you do. Do you find that, Vicky? Oh, so much. I had I had one client, I said, tell me your story. And an hour and a half later, he was still explaining what he did. And I said, you've got a four, four minute pitch. You really need to make this a bit more succinct. But I mean, it's very common, but it's very natural, isn't it? I mean, we, we, we read stories as children. We love stories. There's something about that whole exploration of stories that goes out of us when we hit, I don't know, teenage years. But I... I myself have been in this situation, but I think very few of us take those innate storytelling skills to work with us because we're thinking about the day to day. We're thinking about the spreadsheets. We're thinking about today's sales. We're thinking about how to get that product made. We're thinking about all those, all the detail that brings the business, you know, plan together. And we forget about the reason that we're there in the first place. So I always say that the business story is as important as the business plan. You know, it's your starting point for everything that you do and it's driven by your strategy. So I think the story is very, very central. 
And you made a really good point. And I, I loved you talking about this when, when I listened to one of your recent webinars, where you were talking about story, Jules, which was just, just a fantastic webinar. But we're wired for stories, aren't we? Our brains are programmed to think in story ways. You know, we, we come to life when we, we get energy, when those kind of neurotransmitters are, are you know, fired off. Um, the oxytocin kind of gets going. Did you know that um, well, our brains process 11 million pieces of information every second? Oh my goodness. And we can only, how many do you think we can consciously hold in our mind in any one moment? Well, I feel like I've been told this and the first thing that's coming to my brain um, is the figure of about 30,000. And I have no idea if that's even anywhere near. I'm sure it's not. Tell us. <laughs> on a good day seven as in just the single number, seven, seven you can you can process consciously seven things at the same time wow. so your brain is constantly sifting through all that information finding what's new frig figuring out what is important making sense of it working through what to do with it and that is how we we talk to ourselves and internally process tell ourselves stories all the time you know we're wired for stories which makes it so much so much more strange to me that we don't we don't adopt storytelling as a, as an approach in our working life in everything that we do but for some reason we don't um yeah. so that's what i'm here to help people do i i this is this is fabulous obviously it's fabulous i, I think anything to do with the brain is quite fascinating actually because mm. isn't it just the most miraculous place when you think yes. about it you know you're, that figure you quoted of the information that we get hit with every what was it every second I think every second that is just so incredible that also at lightning speed we are filtering all of that you know yeah. to, to get to that seven that will have probably had to happen quite quickly so there's all yes. sorts of dynamics at work isn't there what the i think the most exciting thing for me is how we connect chemically mm. to stories as i mm. talked about in the webinar you mentioned oxytocin you know yep. i talked about the three heavenly hormones that we produce when we're listening to stories depending yep. on what type of story we're listening to as well you know if it's absolutely if it's sort of dramatic and we're on the edge you know there's kind of that uh, the dopamine type of fix isn't there and then you get yeah. kind of the adversity stories where you're really tapping into those emotions and of course the funny stuff which is the endorphins um i just think that what we've probably done is just made it a very subconscious thing that it just happens we're used to it we know stories work but we haven't really then tapped into how we can really totally use them it's a bit like technology you get a bit of software on your computer you you use certain parts of it i know i do i won't mm -hmm. be using all of the features to its maximum no way yeah. i'll yeah. just use the things that i found that were quite easy so i won't be maximizing how i use that technology and it's exactly the same with stories don't you think yes absolutely Oh, that's that's a great comparison because, you know, we think we know stories so well. We tell ourselves stories the whole time. We apply stories to our business, to our to our way of thinking around business. And in the same way as technology, yes, we know a little bit of it. And that's not to decry the millions and millions of fantastic marketers and PR people. That's where I came from. I was one of those people who are telling great stories every day. But there are certain things that stories do that most corporate communications doesn't do. And there are certain things that make a story distinct from whatever those communications are doing. You know, I've written many, many press releases and they're quite tactical. You know, they're talking about a particular product line or they're talking about a particular event or a, or a great customer case study, something that, you know, brings to life the culture of the business but it's not the thing that drives the company every day. It's not the thing that the whole company are united around. And I talk about getting everyone on the same page, mm. you know, from the lead, from the CEO to the, to, to the cleaner or, you know, whichever way it goes right the way through the organization, 
you want people to be able to recount the mantra the thing that sets the business apart the thing that drives the business culturally and reputationally and and i see culture and reputation as two sides of the same coin yeah you know it's it's internal and external there shouldn't be a disconnect there should be one story that makes everybody passionate about the business and that's not going to be two percent growth this quarter or a financial target you know that is going to be something that makes a difference to the world yeah a real purpose-driven story yeah. but that that rides across the business it should drive the values it should drive the operations it should drive the strategic thinking it should it should be it should underpin everything so that you can be credible with your customers and your other stakeholders you know you can you live and breathe what you do people see it that you know they can recount it to you just by your actions that's yeah. the kind of story i'm talking about that's that's really powerful as well isn't it and it creates a consistency um, in every way doesn't it that message yeah. is always consistent and um your people are always showing up in the same way you know even though they might have that lovely uhp as i call it their unique yep. human proposition yeah um, because that's also part that. of it isn't it but yeah it's absolutely. aligned and so it just feels really good i i just adore this conversation <laughs> i think this is what sets businesses apart actually truly this is what makes them really unique is that kind of their unique human proposition which is ultimately the story yeah. That, that goes through that business. Yeah. Um, now, you mentioned that you've written some great PR pieces and et cetera, et cetera. This is my little cue into saying, so Vicky, tell us, um, what was it that you started out as in order to have arrived where you are now? Well, I've always been a communicator. So my whole career has been about communications and I spent many years in big corporate places like BP, Vauxhall, Stroke General Motors, um, as a marketer. So I, I studied marketing. I went into brand management roles that ended up as global brand management roles for various different brands in automotive, in oil, and absolutely loved that. You know, marketing is great. You get a really good sense for a whole load of different channels. And importantly, a really great sense of the audience, which I can't stress enough, is fundamental when you're writing your story because you need to know who you're talking to and you can adapt your story. It doesn't have to be rigid, just needs to be consistent. So that was a great way of thinking strategically through, through marketing, which is, I think is 80% strategic. Uh, and then I moved into, for a good period of time, into retail um, at Home Retail Group, who then owned Argos and Home Base. So, big change around. I've been in organisations going through massive changes, like BP buying Castrol and going through all of that, which is great. But um, then I went into Home Retail Group and I was there for 10 years as head of comms, running the communication teams, hence writing lots of press releases and internal communications and stuff around a massive portfolio of products around a huge, um, a huge uh, number of reputational issues, crises that we had to manage, manage through to protect the reputation of the business. But it was really in Argos where uh, we had a new CEO come in and he developed a really clear strategy to make Argos a retail leader in a digital age. And it was very clear and compelling. And my job was to make sure that that message was a golden thread through everything that we did in communications and i trained the leadership team i changed 270 trains 270 store managers who were moving to digital stores every touch point in the business that was bringing this strategy to life i media trained those guys with that consistent story and that became so compelling that sainsbury's ended up buying the company for 1.4 billion which was great um, and, but it's funny because it wasn't until I was on a leadership program uh, shortly before leaving that um, somebody said to me, do you know, Vicky, you have to figure out what's your story. <laughs> and I went, uh, what do you mean? You know, I'm standing behind these other people making them look good. He said, no, if you're in the lift with the new CEO, how are you, you know, what are you going to say to him? Why should he have you around? 
Uh, and I panicked a bit <laughs> and I thought, he's absolutely right. I need to figure out my personal story. And I did that. And I went and helped several other people on that program figure out their personal stories as well, which actually I love. That was almost, that coaching bit was almost the, the, the most compelling piece for me. Yeah. And, um, and that's when I started on my journey at the Scottish Storytelling Centre, um, where I met um, the Mary Tribesman and, uh, and also Emerson College of Storytelling. And, and through my own studies, I kind of went on a journey because what I realised was the fundamental difference. There's a guy called Robert McKee. <laughs> so Robert McKee is, he literally wrote the book on story. He has trained Oscar winning screenwriters. He's the most fabulous person. I went on his three day storytelling program and I was actually his UK ambassador for, um, for a little while for a program that he was running called Storynomics, which was absolutely fantastic. Um, but what he, what he talks about is how companies brag. They talk about themselves. It's all about what they're doing. It's all push, 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 push with no real consideration for what the audience really, really wants. And um, that is a fundamental difference in storytelling. You are translating it. The hero of your story, if you're in business, will typically be the customer. And what you're doing is mirroring something that you have a need and a want in them that you have created that they want to pull from you. So they're going to go, well, why wouldn't I buy from you? You know, cause you have, you, you are me, you have everything I need. That's real connection. Yes. Um, that's everything I teach in a selling capacity. Exactly. Is that whole connection piece of it's not about you it's about your customer. It's now the buyer's journey, you know, and this is different to when I was trained to sell, when I was trained to sell, there was no internet. So, of course, the salesperson was king, you know, whatever, yeah. I told you, Vicky, you believed yeah. it, guess what, you know, and it was like that, as arrogant as that sounds, that was the way we were trained, and it was the way the world was, if I said I'm yeah. number one in the world, you believed I was, how could you possibly check? Yeah. Of course, everything changed when we were able to access all of that amazing information on yeah. the internet, and so... To be able to connect on those much deeper levels in the way we have to now, it has to be in this way that the customer has to be the hero, as mm -hmm. you say, of the story. And we're, yep. we're the guide, potentially. I quite like that word. Yes. But they are absolutely the hero of that journey. They want to be. You need to make them that in order for them to be successful and, and leave with all that fabulous knowledge that they didn't start with, you know? Yeah, so you're absolutely right. That, that, is, that is completely it. And back to the way that the, the mind works, I'm fascinated by these mirror neurons. Have you heard about these? Yes, I think I have, but tell us yeah. more. Well, the, it's quite a recent discovery, but we have mirror neurons in our brain that allow us to, so it would, mirror neurons allow me to experience something that's happening to you as if it were happening to me. Oh, wow. So I'm experiencing it as if I'm you and the most compelling stories and films or, or what plays or whatever are the ones where we are, we are right in that seat. We are totally, you know, what you want is what I want. Yeah. And any story, if you watch any film, whatever, whatever, it's all about the hero's journey, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Whatever is happening, whether they're in the middle of outer space or in the middle of Detroit or the middle of anywhere, Buckingham where I am now <laughs> um it's the internal journey that matters you know it's the journey that the hero takes through all the twists and turns gathering information with the help of guides along the way to be able to solve what is their internal object of desire which is the resolution of the story so what we're trying to do in business is exactly that the customer's on a journey and we are their guide if you like we are resolving uh so that they can achieve their object of desire. They might not know they have that object of desire to start with, but that's why we're guiding them in a way that is completely empathetic with, with what it is that they, they need and want. Yeah. And those kind of businesses are the ones that are successful. I, my, one of my favorite stories is Jeff Bezos at Amazon. He has banned PowerPoint. I don't know about you, but I have a particular... <laughs> 
loathing of PowerPoint because it stops at the message. And so to Jeff Bezos has banned PowerPoint and every new idea has to come to the board in the form of a six page story. Oh, wow. And then they have study hall and they sit and read all of these proposals and they have to hit them like a story and then they discuss it. And if it's compelling enough to the board, then it gets past that into the next stage that might reach a customer. But if it doesn't get past that stage, if it's not compelling to Jeff and the team as, as a story, then it doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't go anywhere, yeah. No. Yeah, no it's really quite interesting, isn't it? I, I always think um, PowerPoint is probably as good as the person who actually uses it. So I reckon used really well, it might have uh, some sort of value. But I think the issue has been that most of us have sat through a death by PowerPoint <laughs> presentation, as we call it, you know, yeah. I do smile, I know I laugh, but yeah. you know, I think everyone could probably resonate with that. You know, there's a story in itself, isn't it? The death by PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, no, it's fascinating. And I think the more we go through um, things like COVID, uh, you know, the pandemic, um, the more we grow as people, the more we have access to even more information that some of us don't even really know what to do with. The more we do develop these um, this knowledge, I think, around the fact that it's back to basics. Go back to those basic instincts from the caveman times when we told stories, because that's mm. where it all started. That's how yeah. we learn about the world. That's how we learn how to take risks. You know, there were so many things, wasn't there, back then? And it was all around stories. Uh, yeah. We've been doing this for years and now understanding how we can really maximize and use them is really fascinating, I think. Yeah. And yeah. very interesting that I think this has quite clearly been a passion of yours throughout most of your career by the yes. sound of it, Vicky. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I'm particularly loving it now, despite the horrible time we've had this year. I'm talking to a lot of business leaders who are completely inspirational and inspired by this opportunity to have a little bit of downtime to push out some ideas that they had they didn't have time to activate or to find new and creative ways to make their business viable I mean we've all had to haven't we you know we've had to look at, at online models but I you know for example one lady I spoke to Jo she runs an amazing clothing business and in each label of each garment, she has a story. You can go online and you find the story of how that garment from the cotton that was grown to being pipped to being made arrived on, on your back. You know, and her, 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 her um, credo is that if you know the story, you'll look after that garment and care for it and have a connection to it yeah, even I more. That. I love that. And she's supporting communities women particularly in in places like india and and south africa and in india i don't know if you know mahatma gandhi founded the cooperative movement in the 30s specifically to help women have an income and growing, gain greater economic power and when lockdown happened all of those imports and exports just stopped yeah. she couldn't get any product in so she decided to make masks she created a um, pattern for masks she got a little sewing group going around the UK and people making masks and now she's given that pattern to her factory in India so they can make them in bulk and and ship them over and then they've got something to start working on again That's great. so I think that that was just such an inspirational example of how people have really turned around in in these times yeah and have such a focus on what's important yeah. Goodness me, all the things I thought were so important before I've really reevaluated. I think a lot of us have, to be honest, Vicky. I think yeah. it's been a time when we've been able to really stop and reflect. And, you know, again, on the back of that, people reviewing their businesses, looking at how they can now go forward in a slightly different way. What are their new stories? What have they learned from this? You know, there's yeah. lots of stuff going on, isn't there? Yeah. I mean, if I had three hours to talk to you I'd want to talk even more about the whole principle of storytelling because I love it so much but I'd probably quite like to uh, just let the audience know about how you work with your clients so you know if I came to you Vicky and said right well all this sounds fantastic Vicky but 
what is it and and how do you do it sort of thing uh, tell us more about that yeah absolutely i mean i i the one thing i would say is the first thing i would say right now is tell me your 2020 story because it, it may be difficult for many um to be thinking that way but all stories go there's polarity they all go from a negative to a positive and and we've had such a big negative and many businesses are flowing into that positive so even if you don't have your founder story even if you don't know where you started exactly you that this this year is is very is very kind of top of mind with people and i think that would be a fascinating to converse conversation to start with and that i'm having amazing conversations with with so many people and that's typically where it would start Jules you know I would have a conversation with you and several people in your organization depending on the size of the organization which I call a coaching conversation because this is a co-creation process yeah. I don't know your business like you do I have to uncover and unearth everything there is about your business and as I'm going through that I'm thinking oh that's an interesting theme you know that might be a really good story theme and I'll go away, I'll kind of do a little bit more background research, I'll find out a little bit more, and then I will start off with a storyboard, um, which will pull out the key themes that I've seen or I've heard from being in your business and talking to your people. So I will, I will really bring out, you know, a couple of things that are one thing that's quite obvious, one thing's a bit out there, one thing that's completely out there, you know, if you really wanted to push it a long way forward, no, there, might, there might be some challenging questions, you know, you're telling me what this is what your business is about, but your values don't seem to reflect that. That's, that's one conversation I sometimes have and, and um, that that kind of unearths it. And we could stop there, you know, I could come back to you, I could share with you, you know, those insights, and we could carry on, or I could take that further and develop your story roots, develop a elevator pitch for your favorite story route really work that through with you to train your leadership team to tell that story consistently i can cut through all of the communication materials that you have to make sure that golden thread goes through because the really good news is it takes a little bit of effort but once you have your story you don't need to rewrite it every time you're producing something yeah. but i would need to adapt it and all those different communication channels the website where i could write all of that i could do all of that for you or you hand it over to your marketing team just to make sure that that is consistently told and it's and and you're, you're boiling it down because what you might have is something that takes a minute to explain to somebody but you are explaining the same story to the mate in the pub to the to the biggest investor that you've ever come across to to whoever it is that's the thing that drives you and it has to be tested and obviously I take people by the hand to, to go through that whole process so yeah it's um it's like many of these things not massively scientific you know I have models I have techniques I have tools but it's mainly experiences I've worked with more than 50 companies um, through my career in, 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 in helping them with their story. So it's kind of really honing in on those things yeah, that make that, you who you are and make you different from others that I, that I love to do. And for that reason, every piece of work you do is going to actually be quite unique, isn't it? Let's face oh, it. Oh, completely. So that, that's the lovely thing. And, and I'm the same with the work I do. You know, no one single client is the same as the next. No. Um, which is really lovely. So a couple more things. Um, what kind of client is the ideal client for you? You know, just so people can get a feel. Well, I say any any business that is going through major change, which if you listen to McKinsey, is like 96% of businesses are going through yeah. major change. And this year it's probably 100%. So, so businesses that are going through change. I love working with with founders of businesses that are trying to grow fast because quite often I find they haven't necessarily bedded their their reason for being you know they know it in their head but they're not using that as their their raison d'etre you know they may have their sales people talking to customers about completely different things and describe themselves in different ways so I think that's a key thing but as they grow things move so quickly the story needs to be really consistent throughout everything and that's why I love Jo's story, because she goes back to the people she is most helping, those people in India and South Africa who are 
making those clothes so that having that real sense of purpose I think is important and I love working with people like that who are growing something meaningful who are making a difference in the world and who are just at that point of taking off where they're going to be you know absolutely huge because you know you can't deny that you want what they've got to sell so what's the aspiration for vicky what is what is it what's your business going to look like you know in the future what what's the dream i want every business in the world to recognize that they need a story to stand apart because the ones that are successful and we talk about steve jobs being a Steve Jobs wasn't a great storyteller. He wasn't born that way. You know, he, he, it wasn't until he went to Pixar and he, he met John Lasseter who, who animated Toy Story and a whole load of other things, cars and a whole load of other things that he understood story. Mm. You know, I want people to understand that this is different from just a, your latest marketing campaign. This is a deep craft, but I just want, it doesn't matter. I, you know, I, I, wouldn't necessarily have to do it it's just if people understand their core story what their core story is how to communicate it how to get enthusiastic about it ultimately I want everybody to go to work for a company that they believe in because they share the same story that's what it comes down to I don't want people to wake up going I don't want to go to work today I want them to wake up feeling I want to go there because that's something I believe in, something I want to do, something I'm passionate about. Time goes fast when I'm there. And that's fantastic. You know, that's ultimately what I want. And that's up to the company to then have that in place, ready yeah. for that employee to buy into it. So yeah. that's the work, isn't it, that you're now out there doing, which is yeah. special. Yeah, I love that so much. Um, last question, Vicky. Um, Oh my goodness. I don't even <laughs> want to end this. Well, there's so many things I want to ask you about stories. Um, maybe we'll have to do a part two or something. We, we can do a part two. We've got loads. <laughs> I think it's about, you know, for the listener, because I'm sure the listeners have, have loved this. And I think we are all much better at tuning into the fact that stories are so important to us. And a lot of it is just understanding how we personally can build those stories and, and how a business can which is obviously your forte. What would you say to any of the listeners based on your journey of building your own business? You are an entrepreneur. You have a wonderful why, purpose and story now for the world. What's your one thing you want to share with them that would be advice from Vicky? Oh, that is such a good question. (laughs) Well, I think you and I are like-minded on this. I think you just need to keep having conversations with people, you know, and keep learning. You know, every conversation I have with someone, I go in thinking, I'm going to learn something new from this conversation. And this is going to be just so amazing. I mean, the conversations we've had, Jules, I've learned so much from you. And that was just a, you know, almost a, just a chance conversation, our very first one. And you never know, you know, everybody has got some experience or some story or some, some great, something great to share that, that just makes it, just makes it fascinating. I love talking to people. So I would say open up conversations, be open to conversations. I know they take time, but really be open to conversations and use that to, to join together you know, all the little bits of your particular puzzle, you know, build up your puzzle so you can see that bigger picture. You can figure out what you're there to do from all the richness that you've you've had added to your business by those people who are more than willing to help you, help you learn and grow. Because the one thing I've learned is trying to do it all by myself it just took me to a not a very nice place, quite a dark place. We're not designed to work on our own and we're not designed to try to do everything that a business needs to get it running by ourselves. We need help. So collaboration, cooperation, rather than um, than just sitting there on our own and trying to do it all. And conversation, as you conversation. said. Conversation. Collaboration, amazing. cooperation and conversation. Conversation. And Pretty I love sweet. that because this is the human conversation. So what better way to yeah 
end it with that little note about have conversations. I love that advice. Now, before we finally go, I want you to tell people how they connect with you. We will put all the links into this podcast so everybody can connect with you. But what's the best place? Where do you hang out, Vicky? I'm on LinkedIn a lot. I love LinkedIn. I connect with a lot of people there. But I'm more than happy for people to give me a call or just email me directly if you share those links, vicky.kirby at vibratoconsulting.com. I'm more than happy for people to connect with me that way and, yeah, start a conversation. I'm really happy to uh, give some thoughts on, on their business and find out, you know, what people's businesses are all about and how they are going about the change from this year and, and, and growing fascinating stuff isn't it thank you so much vicky for a really inspiring conversation today um if i could change the name of this particular podcast it would be the inspiring conversation oh it was very human obviously <laughs> um, so no it was really great to chat to you i knew it would be because of my love for stories anyway so i hope the audience have felt the same and, and i really appreciate your time at being my guest today so thank you so much Thank you for having me. It's been great. Uh, it's a pleasure. And for the listeners, um, wow, what an amazing episode. Um, I know for a fact I'm going to want to watch it again, listen to it again. So for your benefit, whatever channel you listen to, we're on Apple Podcasts, we're on Spotify, Stitcher, SoundCloud, all the S's. But we're also on YouTube, so you can actually watch this conversation, which is probably an even deeper connection, let's face it, because you can see Vicky's lovely face. Mm -hmm. But thank you for listening. I hope we've inspired you today. And join us again on The Human Conversation. Ta-ta for now. You've just been listening to The Human Conversation podcast with Jules White. To find out more about the other work that Jules does, please visit her website, www.liveitloveitsellit.co.uk. And if you enjoyed the podcast, then please do leave a rating and review on the platform you use to enjoy her show. Thanks for listening and see you next time.